Hello, Michael Bell. Yeah. Welcome to Turkey and Samsun. Uh, I want to first ask, uh, this is the first time that we are doing uh, reading fiction seminars. And how do you find this seminars? Well, I think it's um, a very good uh, initiative. And um, uh, my impression of the students is that they are sophisticated and uh, engaged with what's um, with what's going on um, <coughs> the questions that we're looking at are always up to date they're ancient questions they're always there but they they modify and take different forms over the uh, over the generations and so I think for people entering uh, the literary profession this is always going to be um, an important topic for them to clear their minds on and to get a sense of the territory and how they might pass things on to uh, another generation of students because one of the um, things to bear in mind is that uh, there are no answers this is not something where you find out what the answer is and then you have it it's a matter of learning to live with a constantly shifting and relative set of um, of interests uh, and um, it, it's almost like learning to swim as it were you you keep yourself up in the water you don't have a particular place you find and then you stand there you you have to learn how to move with the with the tides with the waves so I think it's, it will always be a, a, a good topic for um, students at this stage in their career possibly before going out on a career of teaching to be able to come to terms with it yeah. and how does do you think these um, seminars and discussions contribute to the understanding of literature yes well um, the topic as I said is a, a kind of eternal one and equally uh, eternal is the question of the value of literature um, uh, in most countries literature is studied you know institutionally as well as um, casually by you know readers of all of all sorts and that means that it's it's publicly supported so that there is always a as it were a case that needs to be answered as to why public money should go into the uh, the supporting of um, of literary studies that it's is it's anything more than an entertainment in which case people can just do it same as they might do any other kind of hobby or or pursuit so that there has to be something stronger about literature that makes it worthwhile and to me literature gives the most complex most comprehensive and most intimate account that we have of the lives of men and women and so uh, whereas we have all kinds of other disciplines sociology psychology whatever um, through which we try to understand ourselves individually and collectively but to me literature is the form that is most subtle and most complete in bringing this together uh, but of course it's also a form which it, uh, as I believe does promote understanding but it doesn't give directions or, or answers it's you know it, it promotes mm -hmm. debate it promotes uh, constant uh, shiftings and, and changes of value so for me the um, you know the, 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 the value of literature is something that I, I, I believe in uh, strongly and the fact that in every generation there are people who turn to it I think that intuitively we sort of know what its value is mm -hmm. uh, that's why we go on doing it and supporting it though it's actually sometimes very hard to put into articulate as it were philosophical mm -hmm. terms what that 
that value is, but um, it, it's always good for individuals and societies to be reflecting on that question. I, I think that intuitively we do it and we sort of know why we do it, but we're not so good at defending it, um, as it were, philosophically, articulately. And lastly, how do you find Janik Bashir University? Well, uh, um, this is of course the first time I've been here and at this point in its history um, that will be the normal case. Most people are going to be here for the first time. It's very young. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is the same age as my granddaughter. <laughs> and uh, like her, I would say it is very beautiful. Um, it's an interesting question in a way. Does a university need to be beautiful? And we sit here on this terrace looking at these very dramatic you know, uh, uh, environments. There are people here from other universities, such as Oxford and such like. Mm -hmm. And it does make you wonder about the, the general disposition or outlook of an institution. And it is possible to have an outlook that is enclosed, that is tradition bound, you know, that is sort of limited in that sort of way. And it's possible to have an institution which looks out on the world. You know, which is which is responsive, and um, there is something about the physical location of the place, the elegance and modernity of the buildings, and then the um, the hills and the mountains that uh, and the town and all the activity going on out there that we look down on. That's really very very suitable. Thomas Mann, of course, wrote his great book called *The Magic Mountain* about, in a way, the ambivalence of this retiring to a kind of specially refined area of reflection, you know, up in the mountains. But it's also a necessary, a necessary thing to do. Um, and I think um, to, for, some, for a casual visitor and coming in and meeting people, the university seems to have, um, seems to have a very promising disposition, I would say.